it was all going very well. I was away on my jollies to Stockholm, Sweden, and suddenly I was summoned to Berlin to see the OG World Time clock. Well, there I met a guy with what appeared to be a World Time, or was it? Let's battle. Good morning. I made it. I'm in uh, Berlin, Germany, and I've come to see Mr. Higgins, and we're here for the, the battle of the world timers. Hello guys, uh, this is Jonathan Quell Higgins, live from Berlin, or not so live because this is a, a recorded video. So I had the pleasure to meet up with uh, Jamie Opulence uh, for our long-awaited battle of the world timers, and here we go. So we're gonna have this battle in several rounds and we will, uh, we will look at different aspects of our world timers and make a comparison. There is one rule, Jamie is not allowed to talk bad about my world timer, I'm not allowed to talk badly about his world timer. So let's go. Patek Philippe, 5231J, J being Jean, yellow gold, uh, and of course it has the cloisonne enamel dial, which is uh, truly spectacular. Jimmy, uh, as a true uh, Patek connoisseur, you have to learn how to pronounce cloisonne, because that's, that's the way it's pro being pronounced. Should it be uh, Khaleesi? 231J Khaleesi dial. Okay, let's, let's find a middle ground in Khaleesi, okay? Uh -huh, okay, I I'm happy with that, that's fine. <laughs> So, um, obviously, your, your watch, uh, Sven Anderson um, from uh, a horology house uh, called Anderson Geneve in collaboration with a guy called, uh, is it Benjamin Chi? Benjamin Chi from Singapore, yes. He, he has the, he's the brain father of, of this watch. He designed it and uh, uh, Anderson Geneve uh, produced it, yes. Okay, and in terms of size, uh, what is yours? Mine is 37.8. Uh-huh. And yours? Mine is 38.5. So <laughs> fairly, fairly close uh, together. Mine yellow gold, yours is platinum? Platinum, yeah. Wow. Mine, 950 platinum. You know what, what strikes me is your watch looks really larger than mine and it's only 0 0.7 milli uh, millimeters. So... That is true. That might be the uh, the way they've done this. Uh, the the bezel, it's like beveled. I think yeah. I think that's the, the terminology they use, which may give sort of a larger appearance. That might actually sort of be the reason why it looks or, or it has a better present size mm. than it actually is. But I would say my watch doesn't look undersized uh, on no. uh, when being worn on the wrist. I think we are going to make wrist shots. Do, do you also want to put it on your wrist, just for a comparison? Yeah, let's uh, let's have a look. I've not I've not actually put yours on. Let's have a. Huh. You should do that. Yeah, it's very um, it's very sleek. It feels it feels discreet. It feels discreet. The presence is is decent. I mean, it's big size, but. It does feel somewhat discreet compared to the Patek. I think both watch uh, or case designs are dominated by those lugs. Mm -hmm. So yours ha have the classical uh, Patek Philippe lugs. Uh, my watch has those uh, eagle wings lugs or some people call it differently, but uh, I prefer eagle wings. And I th think that is a signature thing on, on both watches. Would you agree on that? Yeah, yeah. I, I was looking yesterday at the uh, the lugs on this. It, it reminds me sort of, uh, I would say, some sort of leaf um, or, or a flower of some sort. It's 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 very unique. We'll, we'll get a really good close-up of that. I've, yeah, I've not seen anything like this. It, it's, it's gorgeous. What is also special is that the surface uh, of those lugs is really concave, so it's uh, it's uh, shaped out and it must be really difficult to, to make those. And I guess in terms of the depth, it's pretty much the same, more or less. Yeah, I would agree on that. I've, I've, often, I've often heard um, mention, especially with the Patek, the hour hand, the, the glass, um, I've never, I've never noticed it. Like I, I've been using this watch well over a year now, and I, I've never, I've never been conscious of it being a, a, an issue in any case. I mean, I, I actually think that the idea behind it is so that I can see through the hand and actually get to what is the crown jewel in this watch, 
the cloisonne, the calisi. You want to see as much of the uh, the earth uh, as possible. And if you had a nice big hand, you're going to be cutting off uh, uh, some of that. But what's your thoughts, uh, Jonathan? You, uh, you, 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 you. you know, I'm breaking now rule number one because I'm not allowed to talk negatively about your watch. Uh, I'm personally not a. F so, what, what you said about the functional aspect of those hands, so that you try to, to cover as little as possible from those uh, beautiful close in needles, uh, that makes total sense. It is just, I don't like that. Uh, it looks like a magnifying glass for old people. That is what I associate Shots with. Fired. And Hit I know that uh, that my problem is also with the side work, the fat guy with a t-shirt. Once you have those images in your head, you're, you can't get over them. But that is me and it's not my watch. Uh, you ask me about my opinion and uh, yeah. that is. But, uh, uh, everybody has a different opinion and I uh, don't want to, to talk about uh, it. Honestly, when I, when I see the hour hand, I don't see that hour hand. Okay. I, I see straight through it to the, to the earth. So, yeah, it does its job. It tells me which hour of the day we're at, but it, it, I, I just don't see it. I see straight through it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, yeah, it's, it makes sense. it's no issue whatsoever yeah. for, for me. Yeah, what I like uh, are those pierced out ha uh, hands here, uh, which follow the same concept, uh, not to cover too much uh, of, of the beautiful dial. So I think uh, both manufacturers uh, took care of, of that aspect. Of what, what is the material on your uh, hands? Uh, if I know correctly, that is white gold. And, uh, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. wow, wow. Wow, that's, that's interesting. I know that it's uh, powdered, uh, powdered with white gold. Yeah, yeah. Additionally. That's so cool. All right, let's get to the to the main detail. The uh, the actual cloisonne enamel. Cloisonne. Yeah, yeah. Calisi, 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 Calisi. What 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 do you or don't you like about mine? Tell tell me. Let's let's go there. Uh, well, we we have our golden rules. Okay, we we exchange watches. Our now. rule rules are for breaking. It's, oh, okay. you know, so I'm German. German. We, he's German. He's come with yeah. all these rules. You know, yeah, yeah. We, we Germans never break rules. Uh, the never speed too much and and all this stuff. So what what I really like about your dial uh, are certainly the colors. It's very colorful, very vibrant, very lively. Um, a very positive mood, just like like you are. Um, <laughs> so I'm a little bit more dull and uh, <laughs> and just shadowed. No, I'm just kidding. So yeah, what what I really like is is uh, are the the multiple colors, particularly on the, on those continents. Uh, those make sense and uh, those are beautiful. What I also like is the full overview overview. Uh, I think that is called the the Atlantic dial or something like that. Yeah. So look, you've got the <clears throat> Americas. And then, of course, you've got the uh, Europe and, and close in, closing in on Russia. Uh, and, of course, in the middle, you've got the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean. And so I just wonder, where, where's the pontiff? The pontiff, uh, he, he didn't make the car. Um, 5231G, which is the current uh, model from Patek, does have Oceana. So if you'd want pontiff on your, uh, on your dial, you'd need to go for that model. Um, but so, then, then you won't have Europe on. on. Yeah, yeah, and just just me being, you know, European. My my perspective, looking at the globe as a kid, has always been to see where I am and really the Americas. Mm. Um, but you, you can't have it all, right? And uh, it, it seems that on your watch, they've they've made an attempt to squeeze quite a bit in. Um, and yeah, you've got Europe, you've got Africa. You've got all of uh, Eurasia, Russia, China, Australia. I mean, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of, lot going on. I, I looked yesterday at your watch with the loop, and and the bit in particular that I really liked is is the ocean, the darkness. Like when you get to the south, like the, I think that's the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. When you when you get the loop and really get into that ocean with with the loop, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's deep, deep, deep blue. But um, just coming back to mine. I've always been impressed, like with the vividness. I feel, I feel the colors are very vivid. Yep. Actually, I told you yesterday uh, we were talking about the oceans, and uh, your uh, ocean here is very uniform but very vibrant uh, as well. And I told you uh, I'm starting uh, uh, about having th second thoughts if the decision to have those uh, those uh, deep parts of the oceans really dark uh, was the right decision because I like the lovely color of uh -huh. your ocean, the uniform, uniformly uh, uh, blue. Uh, 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 tone and what what really strikes me is um, that different makers of those dials 
have different shades of blue. It's, it is blue, but it's a totally different shade of blue. I would say yours is a little bit um, more on the, it has more yellow, in mm -hmm. my opinion, mm -hmm. the, the blue, uh, while my blue is a little bit more inky. Would, would you agree yeah, on that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yours, yours is definitely much, much darker and not just the blue but all, all of the colors the, the greens the yellows I mean and and one one watch from the same manufacturer so the same watch that uh, Jonathan has here the other five or six pieces that have come out from this uh, this uh, Anderson Geneve are all going to be very different like the, the color scheme is, is is never going to be exactly the same and even as even as close as getting into the actual cloisonne the prisms where, where they're building you know the, the countries um, they're all going to be slightly different and that and that's what's so so beautiful about this being the art of horology but within the art of horology we have art within the piece you know being the the the, the enameling the cloisonne it's i mean it's, it's, yeah, it's incredible it's, it's unique yes it's it's true craftsmanship yes so uh, i've heard some some comments people were saying i deliberately uh, closed out america uh, has nothing to do with uh, uh, how I feel about America. Actually, I love uh, America. My, the, uh, the, the objective for my dial was I wanted three spaces on the dial, and that is Hamburg, that is Hong Kong, and that is the beautiful island of uh, Bora Bora, and all are here on, the, on that dial. If we would have incorporated uh, the U United States or uh, the South and, and uh, North America, uh, it would have been too focused out and uh, the details would have been then lost. Yeah, and, and that's, that's very unique, the fact that you've been able to really personalize this watch and, and make it your watch, truly your watch. So you, you've gone with you know certain locations on the city ring, uh, which obviously have you know deep meaning to you. Perhaps where you got married, perhaps where you've had an amazing holiday. You know, in my case, I, I would have I would have perhaps put you know where my wife grew up, Baghdad, where we had a baby, Malaga, um, where we grew up, you know, together, where we got married. I mean, you, you, the, the possibilities are, are endless. And, and and whilst we're looking at the city ring, I just want to say. Aventurine, like wh whoever the designer was w within Sven Anderson or Anderson Geneve, whoever it was that decided, it's it's incredible. That is a uh, Benjamin Chi's decision. Benjamin Chi, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Benjamin Chi wanted the that Aventurine. I, I just imagine sitting at the traffic light, nice sunny day, and just just glancing at the wrist and sort of seeing what the time is and the sparkle, the sparkle from the Aventurine just coming back and and hitting you in the eye. Not just not just the sparkle, but also the dial. You're going to get different variations of color we're, reflections. We're trying to do the sparkle here on video. Maybe you're able to see it, or maybe not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only one thing. Oh, that I didn't. Oh. We're gonna, we're gonna, we've been nice. But there's only one thing that I don't like. Everything else I love. I love. I love. I love. Platinum. Everything's beautiful. There's only one thing. The the uh, the, the the hour ring. I would just do what Patek have done, which is, you know, you can clearly define or, or make a distinction between what are the daylight hours and what are the nighttime hours. So on my one from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m., it's in a, in a lighter colored, um, lighter shade of color. And then the nighttime is 7 p.m. till 6 a.m. It's a darker color. So ju just looking at yours, it's all one. Yeah, it's all it's uniform. All one color. But that's just a minor <clears throat> knowing um, what I know and having had that watch. And I agree with you. I think I'm, I'm not uh, Benjamin Chi's uh, spokesman. Uh, I think he tried to make to make his own world time, and uh, I think he tried hard to uh, to. Uh, to counter the arguments that he was just copying Patek Philippe. Yeah. So I think that that is the main reason because it, it's not rocket science to uh, to divide the, those uh, hour rings into two yeah. different. Uh, but one one thing that you did manage to achieve by having that color is you've matched it with the uh, strap. 
Yes. Shots fired. <laughs> Hit the deck. We mentioned it. Now another controversy. Yes, the strap, uh, which which is cursing. What, what have you got to say about the uh, strap? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, nothing. I like it. Uh, what is your opinion? Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not too sure. It's how uh, about the stitching? I've seen. <laughs> I've I've seen some of the uh, the controversy, mm -hmm. but. Um, yeah, it's it's okay. What what would you call this color? Is it like a turquoisey or, or teal? Teal maybe. I, I would call it gray with a greenish hue. Yeah, that, that yeah. is that is how I call it. Yeah, but you, yeah. you, you know the straps neither here nor there. It's it's about the watch. And yes, and uh, keep in mind uh, the first time I've seen that watch in that monochrome article, uh, it had this kind of color strap. So I'm a little bit. Um, influenced by by this color because that is uh, how I fell in love with the watch so I I would defend this uh, particular strap you think this strap is from uh, Camille Fournay no it's not Camille is Fournay it not? it's a it's a different maker but uh -huh. maybe you have noticed it's also inside alligator so that is true oh. luxury so inside it's a different uh, but that's rough color. that feels a bit rough like on mine uh, the the inside um, yeah, because it's not it's alligator. More soft. Yeah, yeah, but I, I like a softer feeling on the on the oh, wrist. Oh come on, Jamie! You're, you're not such a snowflake. <laughs> so, wow! Yeah. Be a man and feel the alligator on your wrist. Yeah, but this is this is well time. This is about elegance. This is about not roughing it in economy. It's about going business class. So we we, we want so we business want, class. You're you're not having leather seats. Uh, you're uh, saying or uh, no? It's much more comfortable than uh, economy. <laughs> But um, yeah, yeah, Deployant, that's the only addition as well. Uh, if, if you can get on to uh, Anderson Geneva about, you know, having a Deployant. I always find, you know, with the Tang buckle, it's 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 okay. But yeah, just, just it's a nice luxury to have a Deployant clasp. So I would love you to have that. What, what do you think? Do you think I, I agree you with it, you. Or? I agree with you and you see I, I've been wearing the watch now for three weeks, actually for two because I put it away not to scratch it. Uh, you can also see, uh, 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 still uh, or already see uh, how uh, mm. how the watch uh, or how the strap is bent. Uh, so it's suffering uh, from putting, uh, being put on and off uh, through that tang buckle. Uh, so I th I agree that uh, deployment buckle would be something that I would really like to get uh, from Sven Anderson. Keep in mind, platinum deployment buckles are really expensive. So wow. Yeah. So this uh, as it is is platinum. Yes. That okay. Is platinum, yeah. But uh, a deployment, I mean, that's going to be thousands, right? Yes. I mean, the longer yeah. deployment, I think, is over ten thousand. Oh that's my God. Crazy. Do you, wow. do you know the price of, of the deployment buckle from Patek Philippe? For the for the yellow gold, I, I suspect it's probably three, four, five yeah. thousand, something in that region. Um, but uh, you know, ten, ten thousand for for. A, By the uh, way, I just want to to brag here with my with my Lange uh, polishing cloth, just in case the viewers <laughs> have to that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. I tell you what, let's flip the uh, the watch over. Oh, that's very I, difficult with the de deployment buckle. One second. Uh, I, I adore, I adore the mother of pearl, the mother of pearl outer ring. I adore, you know, my my daughter's name Pearl. So there's something about pearl that that I just adore. What what is the how did they get the uh, the, the the writing the Benjamin Chi Hort horology Anderson Geneve how did they get that into the the, the, the mother of Pearl? I think it's printed on top if if okay. I know that correctly but uh, I agree with you um, uh, I think that's a very nice touch because usually those movement rings are metal uh, precious metal or not. Um, and it's just such a, such a beautiful romantic idea by Benjamin Chi to make that in, in Mother of Pearl that just gives... You, you were talking about having a, an extra level of luxury and mm. I think that is an extra level of luxury that uh, Mother of Pearl movement. Really. Yeah, yeah. And you, you love your... Uh the, the rotor, don't you? you oh, love the, that the blue. You yeah, keep talking about the blue. I I have a hard time to decide which uh, which one of those three components is really the most attractive, uh, and in my opinion, uh, the the rotor is the most uh, attractive part of of this watch. Followed then by the Aventurian City Ring. Followed then by the Cloisonné dial. 
we started with a with a special thing about the the cloisonné dial uh, but in my opinion the star of the show or of the watch is really that beautiful solid gold blue uh, blue gold rotor mm. uh, which is just hypnotizing do you, do you think I, I i i'm gonna choose the aventurine as the 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 bit i like the most you don't don't like the rotor i love the rotor Practice? but if i have to choose one of what is going to be the star mm -hmm. It's the Aventurine. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, I would do Aventurine and then the Pearl and then the Rotor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are so, so many nice aspects. And uh, I've said it before, Ben really tried to, to make something super luxury. Mm -hmm. And I disagree with you the, the, of the inside alligator. I think that that's really cool. And that is true luxury when you have the alligator leather inside. Uh, and. Uh, that that is just a topic throughout the the watch. Then it falls short a little bit on on the deployment or the lack of the deployment. Right. Angle. But there's hope. There's hope with some uh, persuasion. Sven Anderson would uh, would would be willing, and it, and it makes complete sense because a lot of these uh, these buyers that are going to be buying these uh, watches from Sven, they're going to be used to wearing uh, watches that are on deployment, uh, and of course it's an additional revenue stream. Yeah, for him. So. Uh, I think also people tend to to go more and more to uh, uh, to deployment buckle, but there is a downside with uh, with um, uh, deployment buckle. Um, I show you my my travel case, uh, which I'm using here, and you will have a hard time uh, to put your watch on the deployment buckle here inside. So it's a little bit finicky. So you have to have a larger volume if you're, uh, you, if you're really using yeah. that pouch. This pouch carries two watches, but you have to have a tang buckle. Yeah, but that's, that's just, uh, uh, it's not an issue with the watch, that's an yeah, issue yeah, no. with it's the an case. Addition, it's an additional aspect. Yeah. It's, there's nothing wrong with the watch, no, it's, no. it's your travel case that needs to go. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> because I have a, I have a, a, a travel case, uh, which is not to hand, uh, where I can actually close the deployment clasp and place the watch within the travel case and it's absolutely no issue. So that that's a, a, a moot point. Nil point. Okay. Nil point. It was worth a try. Yeah, yeah. So tell me micro rotor? Yeah, what's your... I, I love micro rotors. I'm a big fan of micro rotors. I told you that yesterday evening, uh, I think the, the finishing on the micro rotor is better than I expected. Uh, I, I like the movement better than, than I thought I, I would like it, um, but still, how nice would it be if that rotor would be blue? Yeah, but gold, gold for me, yellow gold, is opulence, and and I'm not really into platinum. I, I respect it. Of course, it's an in incredibly precious metal, very very special, and it's it's discreet. But I, I, I like yellow gold, not rose gold, not white gold, yellow gold. Which is a fair point. Um, I, that is my preference. I don't have uh, any yellow gold watches. And so we, we have different tastes, but I hope that, uh, uh, that we're drinking a beer tonight together still. <laughs> with all the, over all those uh, disagreements. A beer and a currywurst. Okay, yeah, yeah currywurst. Yeah. You're due, due to have a currywurst. But I'll be, I'll be honest, here in Berlin, and that, oh, now I'm opening a can of worms within Germany. Uh, coming from Hamburg, I would say the better currywurst is in Hamburg. Uh, ah. you, you don't get a really good currywurst here in Berlin, in oh, my opinion. Right. But, wow. but we're going to try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, imagine you, you've just taken a flight. You've gone, so, so of course, right now, being in Berlin, the, the city ring is set to Paris, Paris as the, yeah. as the mm -hmm. local time zone. And mine is set to Hamburg. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. going to hop on a flight. I'm going to land in uh, Bangers, Beijing. We're gonna just press the button. What, what, what do you make of that? As uh, uh, it's it's beautiful function. Uh, the function is genius, and I will admit that it's better than than on my watch, uh, which is a little bit complicated to set. Oh, now I, I overdid it. So well, oh well, oh, well, that's we not to, an issue. Yeah. You can go all the way around but, the world. But again. you can go easily back with my watch. Yeah, I, I I found yours to be relatively easy. You just you just literally get your finger. We'll get a nice close-up of this in a minute, but you get you get your finger in it. it it's not too difficult. And you can set it back and forth. Here, that yeah, one only in one direction. You can get precision. I mean, of course, mine's going to be precise, but 
with, with this, if you go a little bit too far or a little bit not so far, you yeah. can ever so gently go until you've got the precise point. But I think it's it's very interesting to see while you move the city ring, the uh, the hour ring uh, uh, moves in in the different direction. Yeah. So you can see that there is some uh, some some kind of uh, very high end uh, ingenuity uh, uh, that is going into those. But I think the the system is uh, is the same uh, with Louis Cotier, um, only the the mode is how to set them. Uh, separates uh, those two watches. Yeah. So let me try to get in bangers. Bangers. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I I adore the world. Oh, time. I overdid it. So that is the you angle. Got again. Oh, you're you're okay. aiming for Beijing. Yeah, yeah, He's got something going on with Beijing. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to receive a letter of complaint now by Thierry Stern. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I, I love this uh, the whole concept of what is well time yeah you know the, the the ability just to literally glance so it's 6 p.m in Beijing we're wondering what time is it in Buenos Aires we look down at the bottom it's coming up what 7 a.m over to uh, Moscow it's 1 p.m you've got a client in 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 Auckland New Zealand you're thinking, should I give the client a call or is it a bit too late? Yeah, am I knocking him it's off? It's 9 p.m. You go for it. You know, that, that's just incredible, the, the concept of being able to tell the time. And, it, and, it, and it's so romantic. Like, for me, I, I have to travel. I adore travel. And this is the watch that is all about travel. I think, Jamie, you, you are traveling in your mind over your uh, beautiful Globus that, that you have at home. So uh, here you, you have it in your pocket or on your wrist and uh, it's, it's basically the same system. In, in your mind, mm. you're just looking over those maps and think, ah, oh, I've been there, I have to go there. Oh, how, how remote is it? Uh, how serene is, is it? So one day I'll be uh, going there. I think we, we both have the same ideas. Right? Yeah, I, I wondered whether to sort of try and go to each of these cities on the, on the ring. Um, and, and get some sort of sh snapshot of the watch in each place yeah. and put together a video. But I don't need that sort of hassle in my in my life. Like, oh, I need to get to Dakar. I need to get to Dakar or I need to get to wherever. So I, I, I quickly, but it's still playing on my mind, clearly, as I'm I will, it up. I will certainly do that with mine. Uh, I don't feel like it's a hassle because um, I, I'm, I'm poking now the... Uh, the possibility to personalize that. So most of, of those uh, destinations are handpicked. Uh, so I want to be there again, or I want to be there at the first time. So I'm uh, I'm going to share with Benjamin Chi uh, the the shots in, wow. in those particular cities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you you would you could just imagine like you go to Dubai, you get the picture of the watch with the Burj Khalifa. Yes. Mm -hmm. You get to Paris, you get the uh, Eiffel Tower. Tower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You go to Alaska, you get the uh, the snow. Yeah. Um, Bora bit, Bora. Bit the beach. by an iceberg or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bombay. Wow, wow, that's so yeah. nice as well. Bombay. So that is, that is the plan. Yes, to uh, to take the uh, take a picture of the watch with a landmark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and winding the watch. Oh! Shots fired. <laughs> Hit the deck. Shots fired. Yes, shots Hit fired. Hit the no. deck. <laughs> Let, let's uh, let's talk about the uh, the winding, the, the functionality. Um, how about you take uh, your, yours and uh, can, can I defend tell my me. watch? Can, so winding it, uh, winding my watch up is really difficult because that that crown is so tiny and slim, it's almost impossible. So what you do, you set the time roughly, then you shake it a little bit because <laughs> winding it, winding it is is uh, more or less impossible. So, but you shake it a little bit, then then the, uh, the the balance wheel is starting slowly, so it will not be precise. So you give it an hour on on the wrist, and then you set it properly. That is the proper protocol and I'll give you that you don't even have to talk about it that yours is more convenient and more easy to set but I will say that uh, Benjamin Chi did a great job in hiding those crowns I know that he tried to avoid the Teletubby look yeah which uh, is which is you know the the original Patek well type was it 
two five two three or yes. two five mm-hmm. two yeah. in that region. Mm-hmm. It had the two the two crowns on either side and sticking off. That's that's like the classic, like original OG. It's a classic, but time. it still looks weird from a from a modern point mm. of view. Uh, mm. I know that Benjamin Chi doesn't like those pushers sticking right. out. He's he's a purist. I, I think it has a, a functional purpose, and I'm totally okay with it. Yeah, but I. Uh, I accept and I understand uh, Benjamin Chi's uh, design philosophy. Keep in mind, I, I'm repeating myself, he tried to do something very different than Patek mm. Philippe. But if, if it could just be where you push it and then it pops out, that would have been... I don't know how difficult that is, obviously I'm no designer, but yeah. I would love it to be like that as opposed to... Because I tried to, you know, well I didn't even try to wind it, I just tried to change the hour and... Yeah. So to to set, do it. set the watch, you better use both fingernails. But even if you try to to use both uh, fingers, it doesn't work. You really have to push with your fingernails out, and then you can set it. Mm. But also setting it is uh, is really difficult. So it's not really enjoyable. You can do it, uh, but uh, this watch I'm keeping on a winder. Uh, what is the power reserve? How how long? I get? haven't tested it. I think it's around forty hours. 40, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So if you wear it most sort of days and then put it down in the evening and pick it up in the morning, it's still going to be, be okay, still yeah. going to be fine. Yeah, and if I'm not wearing it, then I'm putting it on the winder. But wor- worst case scenario, if if you didn't have it on the winder, I would just just put it on the wrist, go for a walk for 10 minutes. It's going to start moving, and then set the time, and then it, then you're good to yeah. go. It will just wind. Mm-hmm. So the so here is the clear practical advantage for Patek Philippe. Visually, design-wise, we can argue all day long uh, which solution is the, the prettier one. Um, I, what I like about uh, the Benjamin Chi watch is he has this, those, those kind of weird shapes. Look how the, um, how the bezel overhangs here. Okay. So it, it has a notch, which is then repeated in this pattern here. This, this edge overhangs uh, on the center of the lux. Uh, you can see here that groove, mm. uh, which is also repeated here. So th- there is a lot of thought in in, in that design. Uh, a very uh, very much personality, by the way. That that overhangs as well as uh, here. So those are f- uh, more far away than the case itself. So it is a different design philosophy, and I think uh, both are pretty pretty pretty. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the. Uh the winner, the verdict. Oh, that's gonna be a tough one. This man needs no introduction. Here with Dodger. Well, I've got to say, chaps, these guys have really put me on the spot. The worst thing about this whole experience is that they forced me for six hours to stare at these watches and try and make some kind of comparison. So probably for over a six hours period of time, I have been going over these watches in the hand with the loop um, trying to see what the difference is. What can I say? What can I say? I mean, it is so difficult to make any kind of comparison. I mean, certainly there is more crammed into uh, Jonathan's watch in terms of continents. And it's a handmade, Jonathan's watch is, is made for him. It's a piece unique. I mean, I can say the finish standard from both of these makers is exceptional. You really wouldn't want to sort of pick at nits between who he's got the, the 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 quality of finish of these movements. Which is probably the only way I could pick them apart is outstanding, simply outstanding. Um, completely impossible for me to choose a winner. I will say that looking at the rotors, looking at the rotors, um, it does appear that Jonathan has got steel balls. And Jamie has got ceramic balls. The finish of the rotor on Jonathan's watch is unique and exceptional. He had that done special, especially. I've never seen a bluing done on blue, done on gold before. It must be some kind of very special process. Um, the engraving on that, or the turning, is, is is exceptional. I love I love the pearl um, rehout on the rear uh, with the Anderson Geneve uh, writing around it. It's completely impossible, guys. Can't choose, but look, hey, I have a simple solution. Get one of these. Pepsi. Pepsi.
Oh, come on, Dodger. Yeah, what sorry. Is, what, what's wrong sorry, with you? Guys. Sorry, guys. Dodger. Sorry, guys. You're fired. You suck. Sorry, guys. Get you out can... of here. Come on, just... So, guys. Simple solution. Go for the Pepsi. Problem solved.